Assalamu alaikum guys and welcome to another episode of Smile to Jannah Just trying out another look If it does the job, mashallah If not, blame Ali Dawa. This is his doing My hands are tight Last couple of days It's been a bit of a roller coaster, hasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's right the Euro 2020, I mean it's confusing to begin with even though we're in 2021 It's like we're living in the past, yeah? But that living in the past isn't just to do with the Euro It's also to do with this whole uh, kind of Pandora's box of racism that's opened up Just because a few people that missed the penalties happen to be black But anyway, a lot to discuss, let's get on with it <laughs> so as society relinquishes religion, it looks towards other things to fill that void, that innate void within us that can only be filled with a yearning for God. And because we're living in England, hashtag is coming home, football's coming home, it's seen as the home, the hub of football. So naturally, the inhabitants of this country regard football very highly and many have even used it to fill that void of religion with, consciously or unconsciously, yeah? But if you put your belief in football, what you're doing is you are in essence relinquishing power because now the control is in the hands of the players, in the hands of UEFA or the other teams that are maybe better than your team yeah whilst on the other hand when you look at Islam it gives you the people control and we give it back to you the people for example regardless of your race regardless of where you're born your money at the end of the day the only thing that puts you ahead of another believer or another Muslim is your deeds but the last couple of days of course have been very dark and it's not to do with the gloomy weather that we normally get yeah for once it's actually been overshadowed by the racist undertones but they're not racist undertones now yeah let me explain so those of you that have been following the euro before every match england takes the knee in solidarity with the blm black lives matter movement. What was a bit surprising, shocking, a bit weird was England's own fans were booing them. Any average person watching is like yeah that's a bit messed up you know what I'm saying. But Boris was asked about this and he refused to condemn it. Another Tory MP from the same party as Boris boycotted the team because of this. The Home Secretary Preeti Patel who is I would say notorious for her overly harsh immigration stance and of course because the conservatives they are pandering to the far right because that's the majority of its uh, voter base. Preeti Patel also refused to condemn the booing and also went a step forward and started calling it gesture politics. I just don't support you know people participating in you know that type of gesture, gesture politics. What? And then when they started seeing that yo this football thing is actually you know doing quite well our people are actually progressing through the tournament they jumped on board and started posting their celebrations but then when this whole racism thing has gone out of control yeah when newspapers are covering it the FA is condemning uh, racism by the fans then these guys realize that the monster that they've created the racism monster is going out of control then they want to jump ship and condemn it but then you've got people like Tyrone Minks yeah Tyrone makes a very good point that these are the very people that have been fueling it and now when you see the fire is out of control you want to condemn it hypocrisy you've also got the mirror newspaper highlighting the hypocrisy as well as momentum and others as well in fact on Twitter Preeti Patel in particular has become a joke yeah Boris Johnson we all know Boris Johnson yeah saying black people have watermelon smiles calling Muslim women letterboxes dehumanizing them so this is now coming from the top down yeah people feel emboldened because their leader is like this so I'll <laughs> listen to Gary Neville yeah that again uh, ex uh, England 
a football player. The Prime Minister said that it was OK for the population of this country to boo those players who were trying to promote equality and defend against racism. It starts at the very top. You know, you know full well that if your parents do something, your children will follow. When we get racist abuse after a football match, at the end of a tournament, I expect it, unfortunately, because it exists. And it's actually promoted by the Prime Minister, who called Muslim women letterboxes. Said they look like letterboxes. So Ozil's, Mesut Ozil, who used to play for Arsenal, his quote also comes to mind where he says, I'm a German when we win and an immigrant when we lose. It's the same with these players. Yeah, no one was complaining when they were scoring goals. No one mentioned their race then. As soon as they miss, ho ho. Okay, because you're a black man, that's what you are. But I do have to say that this team, it's much easier to get behind this team. You had people like Marcus Rashford, who made the government do a U-turn and helped many thousands of kids get free school lunches. 10 players out of the 26 are coloured folk in the English team. Saka is the son of Nigerian immigrants while Sterling was born in Jamaica. Gareth Southgate has conducted himself immaculately whilst coming from a time where he missed a penalty and he was used as a scapegoat. Now he has been seen on the front pages consoling his young players and taking the blame on himself. He is somebody that has spoken against Brexit as well and you know what he's conducted himself and his team very well. This was a very easy and a worthy England team to get behind and you know what the fact that these racists are bad mouthing them shows that there must be something good in these players. So yeah guys just some uh, hypocrisies that needed uh, exposing that needed mentioning and yeah bring on the World Cup next year inshallah. Until next time Assalamu Alaikum